Hey. Hey. Hello. This is the biorobotics lab? Yes, yes, indeed. I'm Grant. I'm Hi. Arun. Hey, nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. Hi, Elif. Hi. Hi, nice to meet you. So what do you guys got here? Show me something cool. Okay. Uh, so we have with us uh, the medical snake robot over here. <laughs> okay. It's What's our, the idea with the medical snake robot? Uh, it's, it basically finds application in minimally invasive surgeries. Okay. So in, in, in surgeries where you make like a small incision yeah. and enter into the body and reach the anatomy, perform the surgery and get out of it. So instead of like doing like a full thing where you open up somebody's chest cavity. Exactly. In, so it, it, it hastens up the rate at which the uh, healing happens. Right. The patient leaves the uh, operating room pretty soon. Less chance for infection. Yes, okay. and on top of it, it's snake-like, which means uh, it offers best of two worlds. It's both rigid and flexible, so it can reach hard to reach places in the body. Right. It can it can like take a turn across the heart, reach the back of the heart in no time, and then perform the surgery over there. In tr using traditional minimally invasive techniques, you'd need to make multiple incisions and insert uh, rigid rod-like uh, yes. tools into the body. But with this, you just this need to make like a single incision and enter the body. You can turn a corner. You can turn a corner. <laughs> so okay. I, I can show that. Uh, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's a joystick. It's, uh, operating is, is as simple as playing a video game. Okay. Just move the I'm joystick. pretty good at video games. <laughs> you must be pretty good at this too in that case. Uh, okay. So you just move the joystick. Yep. And the tip of the robot yep. uh, has two degrees of freedom. Yep. Right now, it can take a roll and a pitch. Okay. And then when you're happy with the orientation, you press the button on top of the joystick, and it moves along the direction in which it is oriented. Oh, cool. So, for example, if I, let's say you turn it up and you push the button, will it continue up like? Exactly. So, so now I'm going to turn it up and then push the button. It's, it's going to start moving up. And so it compensates in all these different actuators to make it move in that direction. Exactly. So if you see, there are so many links over there. There are about 60 different links. But yeah. we have only six actuators that control nice. all those degrees of freedom. Perfect. All right, let me try. Absolutely. OK, can you back them up? OK, just move the joystick and get a feel for how the tip of the snake moves. <laughs> it's, it's my first time doing minimally invasive surgery, people. Give me. It's, it's really cool. It's like uh, very, it's very nimble. <laughs> for something like, you know, when you look at something that has six actuators, it's quite nimble for that. OK. There is also another uh, point which I would like to make right now. Uh, you're having a bird's eye view of the robot and the organ. Right. But typically during the surgery, you don't have that. Right. Because you're, in, you're, you're basically looking at the body through a straw. Right. So the tip of the snake actually oh, has a small camera. Oh my goodness. So we insert optical fiber through tool ports, which run all, all along the snake. Ha! And so you can see, you yes. can pretty much see down the tunnel where you're going. Exactly. In fact, that sometimes gives you a better perspective of where you are and how you need to move than yeah. what you're having right now. I like it. I like it. I'm in. <laughs> I did it. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> you're in your first try. Sweet. That's really cool. Thank you. Awesome. Great work, you guys. Thank you so much. I just want to stay here all day and like <laughs> play with the snake. <laughs> I can see that this right now is uh, a prototype. Are you making something even smaller, say, that could, you know, go down veins, maybe? Uh, not really, but we are focusing more on uh, trying to give it more uh, uh, features. For example, be able to sense force feedback. Yeah. So when in, right now you had no force feedback when you were right. hitting the heart. So you right. can feel, oh, I, I'm hitting exactly. the, uh, the edge of that. And exactly. Okay. And, and let's say you're, you're performing a surgery, and then you have to remove a tumor. The tumor is generally more stiff than the rest of the organ. Yeah. If there is some way for you to poke and feel that you know this portion is hard, this portion is soft, you get a better sense of where you are, and then you would be able to perform the surgery with a little more precision than what you can right now. Right, because you might not be able to actually see this part. Exactly. Is the hard part. Exactly. Cool. Also, the tumor is embedded inside the tissue, so it, just looking at it wouldn't really give you the information, but touching it, probing it, and sensing the force would give you a better information about uh, the tumor. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. Oh, is this a snake lab? Hey, I'm Grant. Hey, Grant. How's it going? I'm Matt Travers. Nice to hey, meet you. Hey, Matt. All right. So I've heard about the snake. Um, tell me a little bit about it, because it's really cool. 
Sure. So this is a uh, research project that's been going on uh, here for about 15 years. Uh, so this is my boss, Howie Chosett, uh, has been working on basically how to make robots like these locomote. Yeah. Uh, so you can see, I mean, <laughs> it's sort of a cool looking robot and it, it doesn't have, you know, wheels or tracks uh, or even legs like you've seen in, you know, sort of traditional robots. Yeah. And what this means for us is that it's actually very difficult to sort of figure out an intuitive way to move. Uh, and one of the cool things that we do, so we're called the Biorobotics Lab. Yeah. Uh, so one of the things that we actually do is sort of look to nature, look to biology for inspiration. So you can see a lot of how this robot is actually moving around actually sort of mimics how real snakes move. Yeah, because you would have to. I mean, there's no, there's no other means unless you yeah, that's right. copy the, uh, the snake. But I can see this would be really cool for uh, rescue, something like that. Yeah, you search can't and rescue. Regular... Yep, so any sort of... Any task or any sort of you know targeted type uh, demonstration where it's difficult to get into and access, uh, you know, it's difficult to get a camera there. Uh, yeah. So you don't have sort of line of sight action to it. Uh, so search and rescue, doing industrial inspection is another big one for us. We've actually done archaeology previously. We've been oh, in, really? Yeah, we were <laughs> in Egypt uh, right before the revolution, thankfully. Yeah. Uh, actually doing archaeology. Go, yeah, going underneath the pyramids, yeah, in fact, going because, through caves. Yeah, because you don't know. It's not always a straight shaft. Yep, you don't know exactly where. Right. So this is actually uh, your <laughs> part of an ever-growing group of people uh, who can say that they've actually had you a see? snake robot. <laughs> if... Oh! <laughs> okay. I've now been constricted by a robotic snake. This is a totally unique experience. Wow. Oh, and look, he's looking, he's looking around. So there is actually a camera uh, in, the, in the head of this snake. So, you know, it's nice to be able to go and get different places, uh, but you have to sort of be able to use the robot as a tool once you get there, right? Uh, so for us, what that means is going and doing visual inspections. Yeah. Uh, and there's actually two different cameras uh, in the head of this robot. Yeah, that, and you've got LEDs for illumination. But yep. the, the cool thing about this is, as I was watching it roll up and down, is you can like find a pipe, for example, and just yeah. wrap around it and climb up it. Yep, so we can do, uh, we can actually go vertically on the inside or on the outside of yes. pipes. Yes! Oh, that's uh, awesome. So, yeah, you can imagine why, you know, certain government agencies would find that interesting. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. The other cool part, too, I mean, if you want to actually control the robot. Yeah. Uh, so this will go left, this will go right, okay. forward, and yeah. back. So, I mean, this is just okay. a PlayStation cool. controller, effectively. That's, that's awesome. Okay, let me back you up. There we go. It's, yeah, and to see it move like this, I mean. Yeah, so I mean, one of the amazing things for us in terms of, you know, a research project, right? It's a cool robot, but, you know, ultimately we're a university, right? So we're doing research on this actively uh, and have been for a long time. But basically what you're doing to make it as simple to do what you're doing right now yeah. has been, you know, I can a lot tell. of people are in between you and what's happening on the ground Yeah, right I mean, now, you look you know? at all these segments and it's as easy as a high level left and all the segments yep. work together. All right, so what is this platform right here? Basically all of these little holes we can put pegs into. Yeah. Uh, so just like PVC made pegs. Uh, and basically we've been doing the same thing, mirroring the experiments that we're doing with the biological snakes and putting them through pegboard arrays to try to see sort of how they're using the pegs to their advantage or how it's inhibiting their locomotion and then trying to recreate that with the snake. And then underneath these boards we actually have, it's, uh, if you've ever seen like an airsoft gun, like the little yeah. BBs, uh, it's basically a large bed filled with airsoft BBs. And what it's for is to simulate uh, locomotion in granular ma material, so right. like sand. Uh, and it turns out that, you know, that, I mean, there's a huge interest in sort of getting robots from linoleum or the lab floor, you know, the, so to speak, everyone you'll hear at the lab, get, get yeah. robots out, get of the out of the lab and into the field. So, yeah, exactly. So there's been a ton of interest in sort of, you know, moving towards how to, how does locomotion change when you go from linoleum to granular material? Is it easier or harder? For this material. robot, it's actually 
easier i say that with hesitation right, right. Uh, i would think it'd be a little bit easier yeah so it turns out that with these the bbs you can actually swim through them yeah uh right. so a little bit different than just sort of like normal water or something but i mean the closest analogy would be swimming yeah uh where real biological snakes actually have the ability to almost swim on flat grounds yeah uh, for this robot just you know, we won't go into the details, but for this robot, that's very difficult to do. In the beads, it's actually a little bit easier. Right. Oh, yeah, like when you so. see a, what is it, a sidewinder where it goes like Yeah, this. you think it's lateral undulation would be the uh, technical term for it, but slithering is sort of, you know, whatever, <laughs> yeah. uh, what it'd be called. Can you, can you set the snake to slither mode? Yeah, so, I mean, we can, you know, this is, this is doing a slithering type motion, uh, but it actually turns out that if you look at a biological snake, uh, it's actually almost inverted. So instead yeah. of being, you know, this part of the snake itself would be on the ground and this part would be lifted. Yeah. Uh, it's called sinus lifting for what that's worth. Uh, but basically what we're doing is in an inverted sinus lifting. Uh, and it has to do with basically the frictional properties of these skins. Right. Uh, but that's another story. Well, cool. Well, thanks a lot. Yeah. That was awesome. Cool. Yeah, thank <laughs> you for stopping by. Guys, I think the snake likes me. A little help? We're heading to the danger zone here. <laughs>